people, it's your girl Adiola. Who is advising this man? Mr. President, who are your advisors? My younger? This um, legends of uh, 5,000 Naira for the unemployed. Uh, I have got a slightly different priority. Hey! I would rather do the infrastructure, the school and curriculum, and uh, empower agriculture, mining, instead of giving 5,000 Naira to those who don't work. Naira to unemployed graduates. Kai, pastor, ah, ah, eh, beru alone, eh? Do you know how many young people voted for Buari just because of this one thing? When you were campaigning, you told everybody, and if it's not you, your party did. It's in your manifesto, and you did not deny it. You said you would pay unemployed graduates 5,000 Naira per month until they can get jobs. That's why a lot of people voted for you. It wasn't the older people that got Buari into office. It was the young people. Now you have a different priority. Buari is losing credibility and popularity among so many people that supported him during the elections. Nigerians are losing faith in this government. People are feeling duped. Even the first lady wanted you to pay the 5,000 naira. And guess what? This picture right here says it all. Now let me talk about what is going on in Nigeria. The price of oil is now 200 naira per liter in so many places. Black market, 140 in some places, 120, even though the official price is 87 naira. As the price of oil goes up, the price of everything goes up. Things are so expensive now. Naira is not stable and our economy is not getting better. And what is Buari doing about this? Traveling everywhere. But that is not where I'm going. I may not make a lot of sense, but this is what I think. Why can't we just look at nations that had been through tough economic times and learn a lesson about how they got out of it. I'm sure that many of you have heard about the Great Depression in America, a period of 10 years, 1929 to 1939, when America experienced the deepest and longest lasting economic downturn in their history. The stock market crashed in October of 1929. Everybody panicked at Wall Street. Millions of investors lost everything. Over the next several years, consumer spending and investment dropped. In Industrial output declined. There was huge unemployment rate because struggling companies that could no longer pay their worker salaries, they started laying people off. They laid off so many workers. By 1933, there were about 15 million unemployed Americans. That's about 20% of the population at that time. And about half of the banks in America had closed down. It was really bad. And yes, these are Americans. People were hungry. A lot of them became homeless. They were going to churches or soup kitchens to eat. The price of everything went up. But how did they get out of it. So President Franklin Roosevelt was elected in 1933 and he introduced an initiative known as WPA, that is Works Progress Administration, since there were about 15 million people with no jobs. His government decided to create jobs. They were like, what if we build a new bridge? People will have something to do, right? So let's build a new bridge. Oh, what if we build a new park? or a new school. People would have jobs. So there were signs everywhere. If you want to work or come, the government wants to build a new road in Oshu State. They need people to carry sand and cement. They need architects. They need engineers, town planners. If you are interested, show up. They didn't have a lot of money to pay people at that time. In fact, people were being paid $41.57 per month. The value of that today is $750.56. But at least people could buy food and that money was being passed around. It was circulating. Almost every community in the U.S. got a new park, bridge, or school constructed during the Depression time. I'm sure you know that America used to be like Lagos. They had open sewage. You know, gotta. It was during the Great Depression that they covered it up and made sidewalks. It was a means of creating jobs for people. So it was during the Great Depression when millions of people had no jobs and the economy was crumbling that the infrastructure of modern America was built. In fact, they kept a record of everything that was built at that time. They built 572,000 miles of rural roads, which is why till now you can travel in the middle of nowhere for hours in America and the road will be good. They are major roads that connect all the states and they built 67,000 miles of urban streets. They also built 122,000 bridges just to make sure that people have jobs. 122,000 bridges in one country. Are we communicating? They built 1,000 tunnels. You know, like if you're going from New York to New Jersey, you go under the tunnel and then they built 1,050 
runways for their airports. Of course, they keep maintaining all these things over the years. That's why we still have them. They built 4,000 airport buildings. They constructed 500 water treatment plants. They built 1,800 pumping stations. They also built 19,700 miles of water mains. That's why when there's fire, firefighters can quickly find fire hydrants near the road. So if they exhaust the water that they brought in their own fire tanks, um, they can just tap into the ones near the road. They built 1,500 sewage treatment plants. They built 24,000 miles of sewers and storm drains. That's like underground gutter. And then they built 36,900 schools all over the country. 36,900 schools. They also built 2,552 hospitals during this time of Great Depression. Not to talk about the 2,700 firehouses. How many firehouses do you have in your state? <laughs> you see, in America, you will go to some, some towns, or should I say countrysides. They are like villages, really. In the middle of nowhere. But you will still find at least one firehouse. That thing baffles me. Eh? And then they built about 20,000 local state and federal government buildings during the Great Depression they kept buildings so people would have jobs and get paid and do you know what happened their country was transformed people wanted to come to America immigrants were attracted to America the economy started growing well you know you built a new school so you charge people to come to school so people pay money you make money and then you build hospitals you charge people to come to the hospital so you make money from that as well the GDP went up by 6.7 percent at first and then 14 percent 11 percent later 27 percent it boosted the American economy so if Wari wants something to justify giving out this 5,000 naira to a graduate if he doesn't want to hand them the money for free instead of him going back on his promise saying that he has a new agenda Buari can just say that when we promised you this 5,000 naira, the price of oil was $120 per barrel. Now it's $20. So we can't give it to you for free, but we are going to hire you even if you need to plant trees. That's a topic for another day. Deforestation is now a major issue in Nigeria. But we're going to hire you before we can give you this money. You have to do some work and people will take the offer now. Millions of them will be glad to come and build roads so long as they know that they would make money and Nigeria will be transformed. They will be glad to build hospitals. There are architects among them, these people that are looking for jobs. There are engineers among our graduates, town planners. And you know, it's common sense. When you build new hospitals, more medical graduates will have jobs. Less people will die because of lack of medical treatment. In fact, it's not just medical students that will have jobs. Shebi, they would need accountants. They would need bosses. They, I mean, really, these graduates will be glad to build schools. And you know when you build new schools, those who train to be teachers will have more job options. The more schools you build, the less the school fees will be because there would be competition. And you won't have to put 12 people in one room, you know, scotters, floaters, all of them in one room. Even students will enjoy going to school. Not only that, people from other countries will be attracted to Nigeria. They will want to come to Nigeria to go to school just like we are coming to America to go to school. Do you know how many millions of Naira Nigerians spend to go to school in America? And some of these schools were built during in the Great Depression, if we construct proper sewage system in Nigeria, not only will people have jobs, but there will be less disease. If we construct more firehouses, less people are likely to die of fire. And that will create jobs for those that want to be firefighters. Imagine if we just build 50 more airports in Nigeria. I'm talking about building more international airports across Nigeria. Imagine how many people they would employ at each airport. And I'm talking about building standard airports. You know, whatever is worth doing is worth doing well. We can have airports ports that look like this in Nigeria. This will greatly help our economy and he can justify giving the money to our graduates. Okay. We will, they will build Nigeria. They will make money out of it themselves. And if we don't have enough money to pay this graduate, oh, by the way, if you just add how much people like Saraki are spending on cars, Yes, you will have money to pay these graduates. And if Nigeria doesn't create jobs for young people, don't expect crime rates to go down because people have to survive somehow. I'm not saying that it's the right thing for people to do, but some of these people have been desperate for years. That was what happened in America during the Great Depression. Crime flourished at that time. When you see your children hungry, you have to feed them somehow. And the way the economy is going in Nigeria, if you don't do something on time, Mr. President, it will get worse. So maybe Nigeria can learn from the Great Depression. Keep in mind, by the way, that you can't go back on your promise and tomorrow expect people to vote for you. They won't. As you guys know, I don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real.